Past five, it's ten years since British troops arrived in Afghanistan as a response to the September the 11th attacks. Back in 2001, few would have predicted that a decade on, soldiers from the UK would still be fighting and dying there. Now West Midlands MEP Nicky Sinclair has been to the country looking at the work of British troops and hearing concerns about government cuts. Nicky is in our Birmingham studio this evening for us. Hi, Nicky. Good afternoon. So uh, just uh, tell us about the trip. What have you been up to? Um, It was an amazing experience. Um, I spent a few days in Camp Bastion, where, of course, the bulk of the British troops are based in Afghanistan, um, viewing their training exercises and speaking to um, high-ranking officers as well as ordinary soldiers um, about what they they do there, and I'm quite impressed and proud of them. Were you... uh, I mean, how was... uh, When you you got there, does it uh, it feel like you're in the middle of a war zone? Um, When you arrive there, it does. For the last, like, 20 minutes, half an hour, you're in a blacked-out cargo aircraft, a C-17, in full body armour, and just pitch black. So that brings you down to earth (laughs) in literally more ways than one. Um, So it's scary. But the the, the base itself is is a very secure base. Um, but you you are you are aware of you you are in a war zone, yes. And one of the uh, one of the main well, there was a couple of main points to your trip. One of them uh, was not so much the front line fighting, uh, but more mm-hmm. actually the rebuilding of the country uh, fo- following the uh, eradication of, of of the Taliban. Exactly, and that's the most impressive work of what our our people do out there. I mean, for example, um, health care has increased from 8% to 60%. Infant mortality has been reduced by 20%. Education, of course, uh, females were not educated under the Taliban, but there there are now 3.2 million women um, in education, a total of 7.3 million more students, 13,000 more schools and 170,000 more teachers. I mean, they're achievements that we can really be proud of. And uh, talking to your European counterparts, European colleagues, uh, what do they make of the UK's role in Afghanistan? Um, that will, that they're devoid of reality. Um, I think they just look at the, the service and are critical. Um, you know, the, the reasons why we went there, you know, initially are, are well documented, and that's history. What we've got to look at, what we're doing now, I think our soldiers play a, an important part there in the rebuilding of Afghanistan. Um, there, obviously, 500 troops are due to be withdrawn, and there, there is a hope that they would, the bulk of them, withdrawn by 2014. But we must get the infrastructure right. Yeah, do, do you see then, you, you go, you've been out there you you see progress Mm -hmm. yes i mean i've only obviously been out there the once i've got nothing to compare to but i but 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 just those figures that i've just quoted i mean also from eighteen thousand kilometers of road to forty two thousand kilometers of of road building um and just seeing that i I did speak with local afghans um who work at the base and i I do see progress the other element of this of course which i would probably like to talk about is is our soldiers out there and these are people who do one day before i arrived i think there was two british casualties um and we we need to look at what their role there that the, there is and and they they're incredibly brave but do we treat them really like heroes in this country and after speaking with them i have grave concerns about the way we actually do treat them the local our, the way our local authorities treat them and the way public mm. services treat our in, in, soldiers and their families in in, in what way well, I'm amazed to, to, to have learnt that, you know, dental waiting lists and doctor's waiting lists are problematic for service families because, of course, they have to move around and they can lose their place on, on waiting lists, etc. And the, as far as I'm concerned, they should be near the top of the waiting list. What we don't... We, when you have a, a soldier um, fighting out of Afghanistan or anywhere else in the world and he's having his call back home and he's speaking to his, his wife or her husband and they've got problems, that's not putting our servicemen or women in the right frame of mind, is it? They shouldn't be experiencing these, these problems. No one else should be at, at all, of course. But, you know, we really need to look after um, our service people and and the, the, there was also other concerns i think the things like we had it the days leading up to um remembrance sunday about the poppy burning and and things like that they really have a detrimental effect on on the morale of our service people so what are, are you are you uh coming back to try and do something about that well yeah, there is a military government a covenant that the government have introduced um one of the things i'm going to be proactively doing is um writing to the chief executives of all councils in the west midlands um asking them you know how far along the line are they implementing this and to make sure there are no delays because we really need to be looking after the families of our servicemen
All right. Um, and uh, with, 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 with cuts uh, looming on the horizon, uh, mm-hmm. does that dent morale as well? Is that, is that something you talked about? Yes, I think it does, Demera, but I, I, I can't stress highly enough their, their, their willingness to get the job finished. And, and, the, and the term out there is used, blood and treasure. And there's been a lot of blood and treasure invested in Afghanistan. And they don't want that to go the way. So, you know, they're, they're eager to do the job properly. Sure. Sure. Yeah, and, and, and they're not economists. They don't, they, don't, they don't put a value on their job. They're professional people and they want to get their job done. And, along, you know, so, and alongside that, of course, for, for us here, say the, the Hereford-based SAS have been out there for mm-hmm, a number of years. Um, how important is it to, say, preserve the, the budget for our special forces? Absolutely. I mean, they do. I mean, I just can't stress, you know, I don't, I'm not educated enough to put in words the, the abilities or, or, or the importance that their, their work is. And we can't value them highly enough. And we need to support them in every which way we can in this country. There have been improvements to, the, to their kit and, 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 they are, and they are grateful for that. But we just need to let them do the job and, and take as much of the worry away from them as possible. All right, Nikki, thanks for that. Nikki Sinclair, West Midlands MEP, back from a recent trip to Afghanistan.